I wanted to do a video today about something I've been talking about for quite a while, and it's called Rocking in the Cradle. And it has to do with how the lever is positioned to soften that top rod on the left rear to get you more traction. So let's roll the intro and let's talk a little bit about rocking in the cradle. I've spent the last 30 plus years working on race cars, building race cars, and racing cars. And I'm here to help you better understand racing technology. Okay, the basic premise, and I've always said it, the problem with our cars now is that if you get locked on the bars on the left rear too solid, it'll take traction out of the left rear because there's no suspension left to give. Well, part of the problem I see with that is the left rear bar is basically the car is standing on it. It's too stiff. In order to get more suspension in the left rear, we need to be able to relax that top rod and let the spring actually do its job with the left rear tire and the shock to get more compliance and hold traction in that tire. I know a lot of people now use the spring smashers and they have what they call extended load. But what that load tells you is when the car is fully on the chain, what that kind of feels like or what that load should be. And there's different numbers, three inch, four inch, whatever you use for your numbers of drop. But I'm gonna show you exactly how that left rear works and how you can determine your own numbers to get that left rear preload where you need it to be. Basically, your preload on your left rear, when the, when the shock mount goes down, it'll hit a point and then a lot of times because of rod angles and spacing and everything going on with the bird cages, it'll actually hook. And your rear shock mount will drop, drop, drop and all of a sudden it'll hit a point where it'll actually hook and start ramming back in. And that's a lot of people call that on the hook. But I think the most important thing, the cradle. The cradle is the bottom of the hook where the, the top rod and the spring tension on it will be the most relaxed. I believe that you have to concentrate on where that cradle is with your preload number. It can't be too soft there or else the tire will just flop around and move around too much. But it can't be too stiff there to lock that top rod. We've all seen four bar cars, if we've been around for a long time, that when that left rear spring gets loaded, it actually locks the left rear suspension. And I, I don't think that's good. It doesn't allow for a tire to be in a relaxed state to get traction. Now, if you're running on a track that always has traction, that's not a problem. The tire, you can abuse that left rear tire and get traction. But when the traction runs out, especially if you're running the high side where your right rear is in the traction and left rear is in the slick, you need something on that left rear to maintain the compliance so you can get some traction off the corner. The most traction you're going to get with your car is not just left rear and it's not just right rear. It is a combination of the two tires working together. So it's really important to concentrate on what that left rear does.
way I did this for years is I built a model, a full-scale model, because I didn't want to go through the math. I actually drew out the profile of a birdcage on a piece of Lexan or polycarbonate, drilled the holes where the left rear rods would go and actually drilled multiple if you wanted to adjust your left rear rods. And then I made some bolt-on feet for the shock mounts. I pinned it on a big piece of wood and you could actually run that birdcage through the motion. I also built some rods so it actually looked like a mock-up of a birdcage. And you could actually run it on the wood. I put some graph paper behind it so I could chart from ride height down through and I could stick a pencil in that left rear shock mount and a front, I did both of them. And you could actually see a line on how that shock mount and birdcage, the whole setup worked. Well, at the bottom of the line, when it goes down, it'll form a little bit of a hook. A lot of times, you can position the rods where they don't. I mean, there's all sorts of configuration, and that's a big key to setting up these cars now that a lot of people don't talk about or a lot of people don't tell you. All they want to talk about is smash numbers. What you got to keep in mind is that little bit of a hook and where that car is running to relax that top rod. You need to know the profile on your left rear of your car. I did them for left rear and right rear. But for this case, the left rear is the most important. That's what we're talking about. But now, figuring out your own preload height. Now, if you run this J, you'll have a height that it will drop. Like if you say static right height is here, it'll drop two or three inches. And at the height where that stops hooking, and starts backing back in, you need to take that shock measurement height. So then when you put your shock in your spring smasher, that bottom little hook there will be one of the numbers you're going to want to keep track of in the amount of preload at that bottom hook there. You can't have a shock that at full chain droop is one number and you're not paying attention to that hook and all of a sudden you get down to that hook with your bar angles and the shock is totally has no preload that that means that the thing's just gonna flop around. It should have a little bit of a preload at the bottom of that cradle or the bottom of that hook. And that's how you determine what your smash heights will be and your numbers. Now, what's the ideal number? I don't have one. It all depends on the track surface and the tires you're running. And, and it's good to keep a log of this, but as long as you know what you're looking for, it's easy to track. And what I always did is once you have that measurement, then you can go to your track and you can figure out your different rod angles and you can lower the, the thing to you get that measurement in your car and you can feel those springs, how much they got tension on them. You can measure the bottom spring like I showed in a previous video and you can figure out mathematically if you don't have your spring smasher, what the preload is on that bottom little hook. Now the interesting part, and I have a drawing that shows this little hook and stuff. Um, it's crude because my computer's updating, so I didn't get to make a real nice drawing, but I have a drawing I'll show later. But now the interesting part of this is with the right rear, 
you'll have to do most of your wedge adjusting and how much roll it gets out of the right rear. The right rear will be probably the most interesting tweak you're going to do on the car because once you get that car rocking in that cradle and you get your preload set and everything is set right on that left rear so the tension is right so then all your wedge and everything that goes on is going to have to be adjusted basically through the right rear or subtract height you can put more donuts in you can change springs change panard location to get the proper roll angle out of that right rear but that right rear now will be the basic focal point of your adjustments once you get your left rear figured out now if you're constantly moving your left rear bars around like I know a lot of guys do you're going to be constantly fighting the left rear and the right rear and everything I would work on kind of getting that left rear set with a certain preload so you know and that's where you're going to run it for a while and then start working on your right rear to figure out what you need for a wedge and roll and height and everything else. This also brings me back to the right front. When you roll up on the right front, I would prefer to hold the car with the right front and let that left rear kind of relax. Some people, some shock manufacturers, like to put the stiffest left rear front they can find, tons of gas, but then that stiffens up that whole left rear suspension. I would rather you stand the car on the right front, hold it there, and let that left rear kind of be softer and compliant. You can also adjust this compliancy, like I said, with the left rear front shock, or you can adjust the compliancy with left rear front gas pressure or shock locations. I mean, there's a lot you can do. But what the key is here is you want to make sure that your left rear can move back and forth and that tire is allowed to grip and get traction on that track. If you lock that left rear tire so the sidewall is the only place you get traction, that's going to blow traction out of the car whenever you hit a bump because there's not enough give there to that sidewall. What I'm saying in this whole thing is you have to let that left rear float, use the suspension, use the shocks, use the springs what they're originally designed for and of course this isn't just late models it's modifieds i think it's stock cars or whatever you want to do too getting traction in that left rear will probably be one of the most difficult when you're running with the four link suspension so other types of race cars might be a little different what I'm talking about basically here is four bar mod, four bar late models, but the principles will still remain the same whether you run any suspension or whatever you do on that left rear. Okay, as a little side note lately, I've been watching some racing from New Mexico and i think everybody's kind of been doing it for a while but i thought i'd just mention it here because i talk about elastic roll centers in the front versus kinematic and how they all play out well what guys are doing now is they're adjusting their roll centers so the whole car kind of rolls around that left front tire it doesn't raise, it doesn't drop. So you have to take in mind with that, with your roll center, the spring rate in the front and your bar angles to get that car to roll real nicely around that left front tire. Very important, a little side note off topic, but I thought I'd bring it up. 
So let's go over to the drawing board and it's a crude drawing for this week, but it'll give you the idea on what I'm talking about in a visual sense. So let's go over there. Okay, here's a little representation of what I'm talking about. If you take some graph paper out and you make that model like I was saying, you can chart like every inch, every half inch of where that left rear shock mount moves as you start dropping the right height on the left rear, like you'd go into a roll situation or a lift situation. You can mark all these out and plot these on a piece of graph paper. Well, this is what I talk about rocking in the cradle. When that left rear shock mount is at its lowest point, it will have the least amount of preload on it or extended load that you need. So you have to keep in mind where this point is and the shock height total at this point. Now, when you get up against your chain, you'll probably be somewhere in here. So this will kind of run the shock mount down, it'll hook and it'll get back in. Everybody looks at extended load when you're on the chain, but I think this is probably one of the most important points. You don't want to have too little of a load here because the tire will flop around, but you don't want to have it so this is all loaded in and it's too stiff either. There's going to be some experimentation and some kind of practice on where you want this to be. But I believe that in here is your most important point. And the wider this is, it will actually allow more traction to the tire and to the tire to move around. So the narrower, probably the stiffer it'll be because it'll get there and go out. You probably want it a little bit wider if you can. So this is, I guess, kind of how I did it. There might be electronic versions now. There might be um, other things you can do. But this is how I did it. I built a model on my left rear suspension Put it on a big piece of um, plywood that you can stick push pins in it. And I use little plastic headed push pins to set my rods up and set the total configuration. Put some graph paper behind it and then just move your left rear suspension through that entire route. If you like this video, I have a bunch more on my channel at Hogan Technologies. So go on over there, check out my other videos, like and subscribe to my channel because when I get a new video out, it'll give you, it'll give you a notification in your Google subscription area that I have a new video and you can go right over there and check it out. So like, subscribe, be safe, and we'll see you in the next video.